Good afternoon, everyone. Um, again, I'd also like to extend uh, thanks to Anna and um, Susie and others uh, within RISE and the Assembly for inviting us along today to speak to you about this constructive interface between land use planning and community planning, which is uh, important because within the bill, it's clearly articulated this link will, will be there post-2015, and it's interesting to start the discussions around some of that at the moment. Also, um, building on the previous presentation from Maurice, that set really a nice context for some of the ideas in this around why community planning has been introduced, why the, the need to think about more coordination within local government, which is a, uh, really uh, encapsulated within the concept of community planning. So the aims of our presentation really are to, first of all, um, disentangle the different understandings of the term planning, uh, just really to set that in context. Also to explain the context, rationale and purpose for community planning and to also present a uh, comparative analysis of community planning models elsewhere within the United Kingdom, particularly drawing upon Scotland and Wales and the learning from there, and to provide really a series of discussion points and recommendations that will inform this constructive interface between the two planning enterprises uh, that could be created in Northern Ireland. So as by way of introduction, um, so to state really that we are a unique opportunity in Northern Ireland to develop this better working relationship, this symbiotic relationship between community planning, which is focused around service delivery, and spatial planning, which really is about the, the land use uh, and different activities around that, and we'll explain those two terms in a moment. We also um, need to take a very long-term, more strategic approach to service delivery and its relationship to land use, to space, and how those services relate to territory and to, to the land use activity within the Northern Ireland context. Also, there's an opportunity for better integration of these operations in the Northern Ireland context, really to achieve better outcomes for citizens. That's, I suppose, a core aim for both spatial planning, land use planning, and community planning. For its success, we'll really require um, a new civic, if you like, infrastructure um, and culture change, a new way of working, a new way of doing things. And a lot of that has been, um, I suppose, touched upon by a previous speaker about the need to for integration within local government and for a new way of operating in terms of seeing synergies across these different service providers and different other activities within local government as well. So in terms of the research methodology, just to highlight, um, the evidence from, for this paper has really been gathered through a, a variety of different mechanisms, uh, really from our individual and collective academic research and review of existing scholarly literature around land use planning reform, um, as well as local government modernization. Um, an analysis really of policy documents, particularly drawing upon community planning in Scotland, but also the community strategies and collaborative working arrangements within Wales. Um, engagement with land use planning reform generally across the UK and implementation of community planning models elsewhere. And observation from meetings and other events really around local government reform and community planning more locally. So in terms of disentangling some of the definitions around planning. We think it's important just to set those out up front uh, before we talk in detail about community planning and its relationship to land use planning. Land use planning really is about um, the regulation of forward management of land and property, and it's in the, really in the public interest. Uh, and as, um, maturation of really land use planning uh, is around sort of strategic planning, which is the territorial management of land use and the development with more of a regional, more comprehensive perspective um, style of planning. I suppose an example of that would be, I suppose, the, the rural development policy, planning policy statement in Northern Ireland that's now been superseded, but also the RDS is an, a sort of expression of that. Uh, similarly, the RDS is an expression of spatial planning as well, which really goes beyond land use planning to embrace other sector um, sectors as well, such as regeneration, such as local service delivery, and really try and promote connectivity across the various scales um, of development. Then we have community planning, which is quite a, a new um, term, terminology within the Northern Ireland context, which really its aim is to promote social, economic and environmental well-being uh, for particular areas through identifying long-term objectives for really achieving sustainable development. And by that, with that definition, you begin to see that it does connect and resonate quite well with land use planning um, and other types of planning, such as strategic planning and spatial planning. And the evolution of community planning elsewhere is really... Um, 
uh, emerge from regeneration activities. They need to join up these activities at a local level uh, and to create these synergies across different service providers uh, so for, to improve the quality of life for the citizen. So let's disentangle community planning a bit more. So when we, when we hear the term community, sometimes we, we've we hear that community planning can be a bit of a, a misnomer and is misinterpreted. So, but I would argue that community planning is quite a nice way of expressing this type of model of integrated service delivery because there is no one single model or definition of community. Communities are quite diverse um, because of their membership, or whether it's um, within a local community of geography, which could be a residence, but also there's other ways of understanding communities as communities of practitioners. That could be communities of, of uh, practitioners focused around spatial planning, for example, or around service provision. So there's different interpretations of the term community, which is quite interesting when, it, when you put it together with the expression of community planning. But when we think about communities, communities really imply, imply that there's something in common within that, and that common interest really what brings them together. That common interest could be around jobs, could be around education, it could be around sustainability, for example. Um, and it brings together those various communities around these particular issues or agendas. Um, and it could mean the communities of geography or communities of practitioners. But built within that, coming around the, these, or being concerned about these common interests, there's a need to work together, really, in some of that. And by working together, there's a need to look at the capacity within those communities and remembering that community can be not just community of geography. Um, so the capacity within those communities is a need to identify, and anal uh, analyze, collaborate, and solve these pressing societal needs and issues through the efforts of engaged citizens and organizations, that is communities of practitioners, working across various boundaries, which really then help us understand the planning side of that uh, in terms of the understanding of community planning, which is really around being a process in which councils and other public sector organisations, businesses and voluntary groups um, really work together uh, with local communities to plan and deliver local services which can make a difference to people's lives. And that's really what the, I suppose the definition is of community planning. So in terms of community planning in Northern Ireland, we can see that it is a, a new integrative model or tool, if you like, for collaborative working to mainstream the principles of sustainable development, particularly with that in a local governance. Um, context. So community planning really is a new apparatus for uh, um, cooperative models of partnership working to inform the design and implementation of quality services. It offers a conduit to consider the following um, in Northern Ireland. Uh, the ethics and operation of a new civic culture by modernizing the state and the machinery of government. Um, that is really to create more proactive um, approaches to service delivery and to intervention. And RPA is obviously uh, aimed, uh, tasked with doing that. Secondly, it's about demo democratic renewal and civic um, renaissance, really around trying to um, create more active citizenship, um, moving away from that very passive approach to actually getting people engaged in decision making. And the local government reform uh, is do, trying to do that. Thirdly, it's about creating opportunities for social learning, in that the introduction of community planning will allow us to develop. Um, more critical reflection on what works and what doesn't, and to build capacity uh, uh, in the community and voluntary sector and learn from their experience to date around some of that. So really trying to build in or factor in uh, a social learning model within some of that, similar to Scotland. But we're quite unique in Northern Ireland that we, we can be considered that it's a laboratory really to test how a constructive interface between community planning and spatial or land use planning might be operationalized because we're the first jurisdiction to clearly state that in the legislation. I know others uh, like Wales are in, have intimations or are intimating that the new planning reform bill will uh, clearly link their community planning model with the land use system there. So let's look at the learning from elsewhere. If we look at Scotland, uh, we can see that community planning was first introduced in the local government um, in Scotland Act in 2003. Um, their model is really um, functioned around this idea of community partnerships, community planning partnerships, which bring together the key players, and they are named in the legislation um, who are responsible for devising integrated programs for local service delivery. The community planning really does provide this overarching policy context within each jurisdiction in Scotland. Secondly, it really uh, helps this vertical connection between national priorities 
and those arrangements at regional, local and neighbourhood levels of governance. So if you like, community planning is the vehicle to, to bridge local need with uh, national priorities. Thirdly, it's a mean to, means to promote community engagement with respect to public services. So there's a strong emphasis on um, creating active citizenship, by getting communities involved in shaping the environment around them and the services associated with that. But there is a lot of flexibility in the Scottish model um, to have different styles of delivery across the different council areas. If we turn uh, towards Wales, we'll see there's a slightly different uh, take on, that, on the community planning model. It was introduced in the Local Government Act of 2000. They had clear ambitions to transform local authorities as part of this act, to enhance the quality of, of life for local citizens and communities, and also to embed sustainable development um, through enhancing and strengthening community leadership role at local government level and to coordinate policies to deliver quality services. In Wales, um, you can kind of see this slightly different approach taken. Community planning is the process in Wales, but the actual output, the product of that is the community strategy. In, in terms of how that's developed, the practice of community planning is actually done through the local service services boards. And, and a lot of discussion we had this morning around the idea of performance management and we heard earlier from a previous speaker is delivered uh, in the Welsh context through the local services agreements, which is really focusing on outcomes and performance management, which is very strong on their community planning model, as is similar to Scotland. So in Wales, you can see that the alignment between spatial planning and community planning could be articulated as follows, that the Welsh spatial plan, which is similar to your RDS in Northern Ireland, really does set the overarching spatial framework for the, for the, the country and for each region that the community strategies in Wales identify the long-term strategic uh, priorities necessary to improve and sustain local uh, services and quality of life. And then the implementation of that is through the local services board, boards that are focused on joining up these activities and to meet the needs of the citizens. But just like here and like elsewhere, as Maurice has outlined, things are very dynamic and, and we're operating in a very shifting uh, sound sort of context. In Wales, there's been changes since, I feel like, 2007. Um, the Welsh Infrastructure Investment Plan really is now considered the delivery vehicle for the, the Welsh Spatial Plan, and it's actually setting a lot of direction in terms of investment within Wales. Wales is also moving towards uh, a single integrated plan system, which is their new community planning model, if you like, uh, which is trying to align the various partners and their other organisations objectives into one coherent single plan. Um, so it's, there's a real emphasis on alignment within those, within the organizations involved within community planning in Wales. There's a strong emphasis on improving measurement and performance and actually dis, um, trying to distinguish the lines of accountability. And I think there's a lot we can learn from both Scotland and Wales and some of that about the improvements in accountability and performance management within community planning. This then brings us on to the interface between the two. Um, it is quite a dynamic context, as I've said, be between community planning and land use planning throughout the UK. Uh, both activities, that is community planning and, and land use planning, are statutory responsibilities within local government and will be in Northern Ireland uh, and discharged at local governance level. There's certain similarities between the two functions. Both are concerned with uh, promoting a strategic vision for a council area. They also involve a quite, a quite wide range of stakeholders as well in both processes. They both promote active uh, citizenship, or try to, and promote active community engagement. Therefore, I think there's quite a bit of learning between the two systems that was of interest to the Northern Ireland context. And this diagram tries to articulate visually, diagrammatically, the, the link between the two. And if we think of land use planning, spatial planning, uh, it's trying to deal with space, territory, land, um, and then obviously in the creation of places and place attachment and sense, sense of place. The community planning model will actually be focusing more on services, therefore more on people, the social aspects, the social regeneration side of, of some of that. Obviously all this happens not within a vacuum, but within a wider, um, set of, of processes dealing with the economic context, the social context, the environmental, and it hap happens obviously within a very political context. But the alignment is quite interesting, I think, because where well, you have the community plan, which is the direction for service provision, um, 
and obviously the quality of life and the regeneration uh, of citizens and of communities, uh, dealing with social change, obviously. You have the Land Use Plan, which is the plan strategy in our new system in Northern Ireland, uh, which will be complemented by a lower tier of local policies plans. But these two are two strategic documents within the new council environment, when one could argue that the community plan providing service di provision direction um, and the other one dealing with land use, that the, the plan strategy will be the spatial expression of the community plan. Uh, and it will be interesting for councils to start exploring that a bit more in terms of how that's uh, developed. And some of the issues this morning that were raised around the timing of those is quite interesting to, to look at, particularly as the shadow councils begin to grapple with these concepts. <coughs> also, I would like to argue, based on this slide, that successful alignment between community planning and spatial planning across the different spatial scales really does demand a spirit, um, a robust spirit of cooperation and to focus on developing shared outcomes, both for land use planning and for community planning. Community planning serves to integrate and coordinate existing plans and policies and to provide an overarching framework at the local authority level. Um, and therefore, the community plan needs to be, I would argue, linked to the land use plan in some shape or form. So pulling some of those ideas uh, together into a conclusion, you could argue that community planning is on this learning journey, and we're starting on that learning journey uh, to develop, I suppose, a, a social learning model. It will require this, this structural, organisational, procedural and cultural change as well to grapple with this changing context. These two planning uh, enterprises require a robust understanding of the relationship between people and place, as articulated in the previous slide. And the councils need to take a more strategic, uh, local authority-led approach that involves citizens in place shaping to deliver sustain sustainable change. Therefore, the idea of having a, a strategic, strategic community engagement framework within councils will be crucial to deliver on that. There's also an opportunity to develop a spatial fix in terms of addressing some of the barriers that exist um, across the various tiers of governance in Northern Ireland through the community planning which deals with service delivery and the spatial planning mechanisms which deals with spatial management and land use development. In terms of helping with that um, interface between the two systems, two entities, we would suggest that there's the need to create some critical space during the implementation of local government reform as we approach 2015 and even after that in terms of the, when the powers are officially transferred to critically reflect on what are the current priorities for councils that is, what are the local needs within those new council formats, um, given the landscapes are changing, and, and reflecting that against the strategic objectives and priorities that have been set by various policy documents, such as the Programme for Government, um, the RDS, etc. We'd recommend that they introduce a, a strategic statement of intent for each new council area, and that can be the integrative vehicle for regional reporting around the relationship between land use planning and community planning was setting out this strategic context for the councils that clearly link local need with strategic priorities. And it's through that mechanism they'll be able to explore what that relationship might look like within the councils. Um, and there may be some variation in that, given the other models throughout the UK, particularly in Wales and Scotland, there is variation uh, in the community planning delivery models. It can articulate ways in which land use planning, that is development plans, such as a plan strategy and a new system, and the community plan service delivery, for example, can address inherited problems in the new model. It can support this performance um, improvement dimension, which is crucial. We've heard a lot about that this morning in terms of managing performance um, that's been raised in the, the local government bill to monitor the symbiotic exercises of community planning and spatial planning. And I think an appropriate vehicle for some of that uh, is by incorporating that into the partnership panel proposal within the bill, that through that partnership panel, that can be the forum in which to discuss those regional reports um, and link local government with re regional government and a more central government and trying to understand that relationship between local need, strategic priorities, but also to explore what that link between community planning and land use planning might look like and there'd be opportunities to develop shared learning across the council areas by incorporating that into a remit of the partnership panel to discuss and disseminate best practice. So thank you very much.